Today we're going to begin working on making the classic animation exercise, a bouncing ball. And I want to introduce you to a couple of other new features. So we're in After Effects. We're going to create our assets this time in After Effects. So I'm going to make a new composition. We're going to continue to work in HDTV 1080, 29.97 frames per second. And right now this is much longer than we need, but I'm going to say OK anyway, and then we will crop our composition to what we need. All right, so I have the default black background. Remember, if you want a different background, you can either put an image in there, of course, or you can just choose a different color. So I'm going to um, double click here, get sort of a blue background and uh, use that just as my background for my animation. And then I'm going to do something that's new, which is to make a new um, solid. And this is a type of la layer that we're going to use for various things. Um, I will pick the color of my solid, and it's going to give me a full screen of this color. Oh, almost a full screen. And I'm just going to squash it down and stretch it a little bit side to side so that I can use it as sort of a, a ground of sorts for my bouncing ball. So let's get this so that we fit it on the screen. And let's go ahead and make our, I'm going to lock that so that we don't interfere with that. And let's make our ball right here in After Effects. We have a rectangle tool and not unlike other Adobe programs. Underneath the rectangle tool we have our star, our polygon. We also have the lovely ellipse. I don't want to have a stroke. So here are things are a little different. We can't say no stroke, but we can set the stroke to zero. And I'm going to make my circle. And I'm going to intentionally put it off to the side so that I can show you a problem that occurs. So I'm going to say shift option to get a perfect circle. And there I have a red circle that I'm going to use as my ball. However, if I click on this, and notice I click on it a couple times to get this to happen, so I recommend that you click back and forth a few times. This little center point, the point that's typically in the center, which is sometimes called the registration point, in here it's actually called the anchor point. You may have noticed that in our transform. It's not centered on the object. It's actually centered on the page. And what that means is that if I were to try and rotate this shape, let's go ahead and make a little rotation, it's going to rotate on that point. That's not going to matter too much for us in terms of rotation because obviously if it's just a solid circle you can't see rotation. But it is going to matter in terms of us getting our path straight. So there's this lovely tool here called the Pan Behind and Anchor Point tool, which is kind of an odd combination of ideas, Pan Behind and Anchor. But that's our tool that we want, and what I want to do is grab with that tool, grab this little anchor point, and set it to the center. Now if you want to get it in the center exactly, it's kind of tricky. You can turn on the snap. But for my purposes today, I'm just going to eyeball it, uh, and that looks like it's at about the center. So now, just to prove that it has changed, if I rotate it, you can see that the selection points of the object are rotating, but it is not doing that sort of arcing thing. Um, keep in mind that that arcing quality might be useful for something else, and we'll come back and possibly use that at another time, but for now we want to use this. So I'm going to leave you with that for the moment, get yourself set up, and then we'll come back and we'll animate this.